Welcome to Canberra, Australia, Malakanyang Press Corps. We're happy to give you this briefing. Uh, and to everyone listening to us live on Raja Nabayan and Bongo Raja, uh, good day to all of you. We've just come from the meeting between Prime Minister uh, Gillard and President Aquino, where a wide range of topics was discussed. Uh, tonight we will have a state dinner, uh, and um, I, there will be more discussions on an informal level on the progress that we've made so far in, uh, in, the, in the discussions that we've already had in the bilateral uh, talks. There were broad-ranging topics that were discussed. We discussed defense, we discussed economic relations, we discussed people-to-people -people, uh, relations. And um, we are now at a very good place in our bilateral relations. As uh, you know, a lot of groundwork has been made by the Aquino administration over the last year. We have, we have uh, with the help of the Senate, ratified the Status of Visiting Forces Agreement. We have uh, enhanced defense cooperation with, uh, with Australia through, through that. We have also uh, put in place EO79, which outlines the new rules for mining, which makes it very clear for companies like Australian investors who want to enter into mining. We are putting in place a very clear uh, set of rules under which mining will be regulated and under which uh, the state can share from the benefits of the extractive industries. And so because of all of these um, things that the Aquino administration has done, uh, it has been a very fruitful visit and a very good visit uh, to, to Canberra. Also, uh, Ambassador to Australia, our Ambassador, Belena Nota, is here. She will also take questions uh, that uh, she was present in some of the meetings that I was not, so she'll be able to answer some of the questions. Yes, ma'am. Could you tell us uh, the discussions of the President and the Prime Minister on defense cooperation? Well, the discussions on uh, bilateral defense cooperation went very well. Uh, building on the gains of the Philippine ratification and entry into force of the Philippine-Australia Status of Visiting Forces Agreement. Currently, there is a meeting ongoing in the Philippines to discuss precisely how we are going to implement our Status of Visiting Forces Agreement. So this is where we are at the moment. So now, the President, just mm -hmm. or the Prime Minister, just mm -hmm. thank the President for, for the ratification of the What did he talk about? Well, nothing specific because the details of the implementation is being discussed in Manila right now. Mm -hmm. At the same time that we are here, they're discussing the, the meeting is currently mm -hmm. going. So um, you were with the expanded bilateral meeting, and so you heard the president uh, who who broached the idea or who thank whom during the, the meeting on the sofa. I did not understand the question. Can that means to say who, who brought up the idea or who raised the idea of uh, well, we just ratify the, the, the no so both sides. Both sides. Both sides. Both sides yes. We we didn't. If I may, we didn't have to bring it up. No. Um, the one of the first things that they said when we entered the room was to thank us for the for the uh, helping the Senate ratify the status of visiting forces agreement. Stephen Smith, the defense minister in particular, uh, said they were very happy with the efforts of the Aquino administration to pass the SOFA. And as Ambassador Anota said, even as we speak in Manila, there is a bilateral team discussing exactly, now that we have the framework through the SOFA, what will we do next? One of the things that we might look into, you know, one of the first things we might look into, is enhancing our humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. Uh, that's something that's been very close to the President's concerns. You know that when we go to ASEAN, when we talk to other countries in the region, the President always brings up humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. And that's one of the things that we're thinking of um, moving forward uh, under the SOFA. Mm -hmm. So how in particular? Well, it's too early to tell whether because uh, they're still talking about it. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about areas in which we might focus on, that's one of the areas. Sure. Uh, specifically, was there any mention or discussion on the West Philippine Sea? I think at all uh, levels of meetings that the president had today, yes, the issue was discussed. What was discussed about what particular? Well, uh, Australian positions on the West Philippine Sea are very clear, and we understand them. And uh, Australia also fully understands the Philippine position 
on the West Philippine Sea. So there is, uh, I would say, uh, harmony and understanding. Um, in particular, one, that Australia will not take sides mm -hmm. in territorial issues. Second, Australia supports the idea of freedom of navigation in the West Philippine Sea or South China Sea. Um, not, not, uh, not to use force or threat of force to solve the problem, and that the solution must be rules-based, including the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea. And both sides, of course, wants to see an early conclusion of the code of conduct. That summarizes our views on the West Philippine Sea. Um, was there any discussion on possible increase in military aid or or the specific areas where the military exercises between Australian and Philippine forces can be done? Like for example in Vietnam or if it's for maritime security can it be done in um, for example um, in, this, in areas where there where disputed areas are we're not there yet. Um, um, as, as Ambassador Nota yeah. said, the teams are still talking about it right now. We're talking about general areas like HADR, uh, but not geographic specific areas yet. Mm -hmm. Mom, can you tell us about the Iraq War? Mm -hmm. Because it's been a while. The Air Services Agreement signed by our two countries is something that's meant to update uh, previous agreements that we that we've had, in order for different countries to have access to uh, the airspace and the air travel markets of different countries, there's a basic set of rules, and these rules have changed over the last several years, mm -hmm. and we needed to update our air services agreement with Australia to ensure that we both continue to have access to each other's markets. This is very important for us at a time, especially when we're trying to attract more tourists. We were just in New Zealand, and we were talking about these uh, uh, working uh, working holiday program, no? Mm -hmm. We're talking about enhancing visitors, visitor programs, and people-to-people -people exchange in Australia. Um, we need to make sure that uh, the frameworks are in place, updated frameworks are in place, for us to continue to have access to each other's markets. So that's what the Air Services Agreement is about. Increased seats, sir. No, it's not, it's not actually specific like that. It's more of the broad-based, uh, um, framework for it. It's actually something that we, we have agreements in place. Now they just need to be updated a little bit to take into account different changing rules in the international uh, aviation industry. So that agreement is not new? It's new in the sense that it updates certain uh, understandings that we had with Australia uh, for several years. No? But you know, uh, over time, the international aviation rules change, and we need to be updated uh, in order to continue to uh, have access to each other's markets. So no specific details, was there you know, updated? Yeah. There were no specific details in the agreement itself, uh, but those, I think, will be, will be worked out between our own aviation authorities and their own. So what, we've, what, what it is, is, is the general framework also. Mm -hmm. Parang memorandum of understanding, parang that's right. uh, arrangement of, of parang gano, That's right, that's right. And it allows the two aviation air uh, authorities to to work out the details. But it's it's expected to really just allow us to continue to do what we're already doing. Mm -hmm. So, so yung malaki naging achievement dito sa discussion ni President Nairobi, Prime Minister I think the big achievements, um, I think what this visit is, is an affirmation of the achievements that have been achieved, that have been made by both sides throughout maybe the last year or so, no, Ambassador? Over the last year, we have taken a lot of steps to enhance defense cooperation, people to people exchanges, economic ties, and, and this visit really affirms the seriousness with which both the Philippines and Australia view each other's relations. Uh, remember that Australia is one of the biggest providers of uh, assistance, official development assistance to the Philippines. They have been very invested in uh, our peace process in Mindanao. They also at the same time are very keen to invest in extractive industries, mining, and we have been putting in place rules that will allow more 
more clear rules that allow mining. Uh, we've already talked about the defense cooperation that, that we're seeing. That has been enhanced also with the signing of the SOFA. So we're, just like, I, I know I said this in New Zealand, but it's also the same here. Our relations with these two countries is now reaching the next level, the next highest level. And what, what the President's visit here is, is it really an affirmation of that? Would you like to add something? Well, it's just that the visit itself is an accomplishment because it's a testimony to our true and lasting friendship with Australia. And uh, to note that even before the Philippines was, before Australia was, there was already people-to-people -people relationship between our two countries in the 1800s. And that uh, true and enduring friendship has lasted to this day. And we will continue to enhance and to further cultivate so that we can broaden and deepen our bilateral relations on all sectors. On so mining, are there any uh, mining industry companies who are willing to invest in the Philippines? Yes, there are quite who are already uh, big investors mm -hmm. in the Philippines, and uh, we hope that in the future there will be more in no. Australia. Pero walang additional? Um, merong additional, I just don't know the amount. Mm -hmm. But how many uh, mining companies are interested? Oh, I don't have that. Maybe we should ask our economic managers. We haven't actually quantified yet, no what kind of investments we expect to, to get from mining right now. What we told them and what they understand is that we have now put in place the rules. Nakita nyo naman yung EO79, that provided a lot of clarity for mining investors. Then we came out with the, inter in, uh, the uh, internal rules and regulations, IRR, implementing rules and regulations. So ang nakikita nila, little by little, we are putting in place the very clear rules under which mining will be encouraged in the Philippines. So. Uh, they all they all also know that there's pending legislation, uh, as, as we've announced before, we want to file a bill with Congress that would allow the state, the Philippine state, to to have a greater share of the revenues from mining. So, in na Manila that we're still in the process of putting all of these in place. And they're, they're um, excited that once it's all there, that they will have a clear set of rules that they can come into. But they want to see some of the rules uh, as they come out first. Before we see any single new significant commitments, they'll probably want to see the, the rules as they're laid out. <coughs> and they're being laid out um, now, you know, through the steps that we've taken. Sure. Uh, so, yeah. any, my, so any commitment is so because apparently they will wait until uh, legislation and IRR? Some of them will wait until there's legislation. Uh, and and we, we want to do that at the, at the quickest possible time. We have two concerns, though. Uh, and, and we made this very clear to, to the Australians, and they understand. Number one, we felt that, and we, as we've always said, that uh, mining, once you extract something, you can't return it. Once you consume it, you cannot renew it. So we have to make sure that the state uh, gets the proper compensation for doing that. That's one and that's clear and that's accepted. The other one is that there have to be uh, measures uh, and enforcement to protect the environment. Since the 1980s, we've seen a series of mining accidents and that has led to a rather negative opinion in the public mind of mining. And, and we feel that for mining to have public support, we need to be able to show that we can enforce uh, environmental rules and that the companies that we invite into the Philippines are those who engage in the best practices in mining. So it's it's a work in progress. It's happening pretty quickly, I think, though. But and I think all people have expressed some have expressed happiness with the pace at which we're clarifying the rules for mining. But there's a really specific ban, like yung and other Australian companies, the Philippines, that did their government raise concerns. Uh, who is not they, they, no, they understand that we're putting the rules in place. You have to remember where we're coming from. That we came from an era, from a time when the rules were very politicized, and therefore that that led to uh, people who opposed mining very strongly. There were people who were very for mining. We were we went in a period where we almost prohibited mining to a period where we where we almost completely allowed 100% foreign ownership. So. The, the pendulum has been swinging in extremes over the last 20 years for mining. 
And what we've been telling them is we're putting them in place so that you won't see these extremes. All they want them on is a stable set of rules that will not change over time. And that's what we're promising them. They brought up in general terms, uh, the, the we brought this up in general terms about how we intend to uh, govern mining moving forward. Um, Tapakan was brought up, yes, of course, as an example of the projects that, that, uh, that are interested in, in investing in the Philippines. So what did they say about that? That was an example of one of the companies that had an interest in making major investments in the Philippines, but, but the rules have to be clarified and put in place. So it was all very productive, and I think it was very positive. <coughs> Uh, last night we noticed the big number of uh, the business delegation. What could be the exact figure and what could be the pluses in uh, bringing with us those uh, big number of delegation, business delegation? I don't have the exact figure, but what I do know is uh, there are over 100 business delegations. And uh, tomorrow there will be uh, what we call the business forum. And in that business forum, there will be five breakout <coughs> sessions on PPP, education, manpower, uh, mining, and uh, another one that I can't call at the moment. But this is a very healthy avenue for our uh, business people and their, the Australian business people to meet together and really network and really identify how they can do business together profitably. And uh, I do know for a fact that there has been an overwhelming interest. And uh, really the problem of our people in Sydney who are arranging this is how to say no to the people because the venue is limited. And also for the Asia Society dinner that will be hosted for the president, again, there's a very great support. Uh, we didn't think it would reach that number, but there is uh, going to be a very uh, big number participating in that dinner. But before that dinner, the president will have a round table with some CEOs. And we expect that there will be very productive uh, interaction with the president. And uh, you know for a fact that the president is bringing a lot of good economic news and uh, business people will be very interested to hear that. And uh, I would presume that we're very encouraged to look at the Philippines very positively, both for trade and investment. Um, what would you, Secretary Ricky, what would you like uh, Australia to invest in? What sectors, aside from mining? We're looking at PPP. Uh, we have, as you know, we have a great need for infrastructure. Uh, if the infrastructure projects that we're doing enhance economic productivity, it creates stimulus to the economy at a time when there is great uncertainty in most of the major markets. So if we can encourage more PPPs to come in, big infrastructure projects, then that's what we want to do. Uh, as uh, Ambassador Ananta said, one of the breakout sessions will be about large-scale infrastructure projects. There are companies in Australia that are very good at engineering services and construction. There are companies in Australia that uh, are big investors in, in uh, in infrastructure projects, and we want to talk to as many of them as we can. We also mentioned that um, Australia is one of the biggest current donors in Mindanao. Mm -hmm. um, during the talks of the President and Prime Minister Killer, was the framework agreement discussed, and what was the reaction of uh, Prime Minister? Absolutely, it was discussed, and they're very excited that, that uh, the Philippine government can reach such a major step um, in, in forging something that, that could be a comprehensive, lasting peace in ARMM. One of the things that, one of the reasons why they put so much money into that area is because they want to see this conflict resolved. So uh, they were really all praises for, for our efforts to achieve uh, peace, particularly the, the framework agreement. And they're very supportive uh, of, of uh, the framework agreement and, and the work that has to be done moving forward. So, ano po, may promise ba silang ano sa Mindanao? Wala silang sinabing, uh, um, wala silang pinangakong bagong project o bagong amount. 
but they have a number of projects that are continuing, no? and, and uh, we don't see any reason why they won't continue. They seem very happy with the pace of which of the projects that are that they're funding, so we don't see any major issues there. I just going back from this code of conduct. Um, but by uh, in what context was it that uh, the you know, one leaders who were in the and during the bilateral meeting or during the expanded meeting? And um, how significant is that na nabanggit yung specific na track na yung code of conduct which is being pushed by the Philippines to ASEAN? Yeah. Uh, first of all, that code of conduct is not solely the initiative of the Philippines. We do contribute to uh, the principles that are involved in the code of conduct. But Australia strongly supports ASEAN's view, which include the Philippines, of course, that the code of conduct be um, uh, concluded as soon as possible. Uh, with respect to uh, the framework agreement, let me just add that uh, the Australian side not only welcome our framework agreement and congratulated the president for concluding the framework agreement, but uh, they did say that our framework agreement can be used as a model for other, other uh, peace processes in the region. And I think that's uh, a very good sign of uh, Australia's very strong support for us and a strong affirmation of the accomplishments of the president. So, when you support the discussion of the meeting and the lone leaders, or do you get expanded? Pareho. In both venues. Tama, no? In both venues. Sabi ni Foreign Minister Bob Carr, the should peace be. framework yeah. agreement could be a model Robert. for other peace agreements in Southeast Asia. Robert Carr. Bob Carr. Foreign Minister. Bob Carr. C-A-R-R. So, just going back to the Philippines, uh, Mr. Typhoon, oh, yes. is the President being up updated and what are his instructions to the Philippine agencies? Of course, the President is always updated about what's happening in the country. He's uh, asked the NDRRMC to make sure that he gets updated and that all the usual preparations are in place uh, for uh, any kind of weather disturbance. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much.